And he instead is moving to rationalization and justification for what he did, which is all in the past. And what we want to do is just figure out what thing he would have done differently to make it not happen, which is in front. So I, as I see the outcome of this, the perceived outcome of management is that that was a really learning opportunity and we got very rich discussion. But the worker view of it is, um, I, is I'm frustrated they keep asking me why and, uh, it, and, and, and it's the same as last time. Mm -hmm. uh, another company one year I worked for had uh, 28 unplanned outages. That means wow. 28, 28 taproot investigations. And at one point I tried to bring everybody's attention that you know this process we're using isn't been, it hasn't been overly successful to stop the next outage. At some point we need to look at our system and process. Yeah, but this is what we do. And it becomes like a religion, it becomes a ritual. Mm -hmm. So that type of realization of re the reality and, and the dichotomy between what we think is happening and what the team, the crew is feeling drove me to try to look a little bit as what, how does our, what influences our human being? You know, and and a lot of safety people are reading things like Sidney Decker, a uh, really interesting guy from Australia, Todd Conklin, who does a lot with human performance and the hot principles, um, Leif Babin and Jocko Wil 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 Wilink that did uh, extreme ownership. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll use that for an example. There are some places doing whole programs based on Jocko Willink's book because it's good, very motivation, you know, but that's only one narrow perspective uh, of extreme ownership. So what I've been doing, I, I have a ton more books than we're even going to talk about today, but, but our perspective changes 